whether we are unconsciously or consciously aware of it, we project our energy out into the world through our interactions, our reactions, or simply by being. The key seems to be for all of us to become more aware of the energy that we are projecting out into the world and to be more conscious of our words, our thoughts, our actions, our emotions, and even our intentions. Now, this is all a one day at a time rewiring of what may have been hardwired into our brains over time, but we can all do it. Before we dig in, as always, I am Tina Moody and I am the author of The Spiritual Awakening of an Analytical Mind, which is a guide for others like me just stepping onto this path of self-discovery, as well as co-host of the podcast Intuition Talks, along with my great friend, Kristen O'Mara. Although I came somewhat questioning, some may say skeptical, onto this path eight years ago or so, I have been pulled these last few years to do crazy things outside of my normal expectations, we'll say, as far as doing a weekly email or writing and publishing a book or starting a podcast almost a year ago, and now this YouTube thing. So it's really all to offer whatever information I can to people or for people like me who are curious about this path, but may be hesitant like I was. So I always like to say that I am not a counselor, I am not a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but I am simply here to share what information has come to me on my path and offer for you to take that information, to go out and research it as you see fit and go to whatever depths that you want to go. So thank you. Okay, let's first talk about some of the negative energies or some of the things that may trigger us to have the not so positive energies that we are feeling and therefore projecting out into the world. And so first up, road rage, let's do that, or slow or bad service, or maybe staying on hold forever. And those all create things like frustration and anger, those type of energies. Um, we can also get into sadness or judgment toward ourselves or others, indifference or intolerance. And then on the side, we have fear or our own insecurities of things. And those are all energies that we can project out there. So as again, as I mentioned in the intro, um, these can come out of our mouth. They can come out with actions. They can come out with emotions and those are often silent or they can come out with judgments, which can also be silent. And let's see, oh, intentions can also be silent. But just because they're silent, don't let that mislead you. It's still energy and people can feel those things. They can be received by others. So the visual that I often get with this and have for years is, do you remember pig pen from uh, the Peanuts? Well, okay, so pig pen, poor pig pen wasn't um, negative, but more of a visual vi visualization, I guess here, that we could see Pigpen's um, dust ball. We're gonna call it a dust ball here. And I always view that dust ball as negative energy when I, when I think of it that way. And even though we can't, um, we might not be able to see it, although there are some people that can then pick up on energy and see it, um, we can definitely feel it and it doesn't feel great, does it? So an example that I give in the spiritual awakening of an analytical mind was my own personal um, faux pas, I guess we'll say. During divorce time, I thought I was extremely good at compartmentalizing that if I was in this situation, I could have these emotions. But if I was around my kids, I could hide those and tuck those away right under the surface and they wouldn't be the wiser of it. And then one day my youngest had left the room and I was falling apart probably just under the surface. And they came back in and started crying and was like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I feel this way. And I had just stepped onto this road and I was like, oh man, it's me. And so I apologized and tried to explain because these kids nowadays pick up on all this energy, by the way. And it was my energy. It was, although I thought I was hiding it, it was probably just exuding from my body because I still needed to learn. 
I still needed to heal and I still needed to let go. And so, although I felt horribly, I mean, we can't necessarily always change overnight, but we be, can become more aware. And that really gets into that forming an awareness and, you know, shifting from that unconsciousness to the consciousness, like consciously making a choice to be, to, to shift that and not project certain energies out into the world. So before we move on about the negative or not so positive energies that are out there that we can become aware of, I want to talk about fear for a minute because fear can take so many shapes and, and forms, I feel like, and sizes. So, you know, often the root origin of many of our fears is around safety, security, and, you know, scarcity. And if we look back likely to our caveman days or cave person days and and whatnot we needed that kind of emergency broadcast system in order to survive right well in more modern times we are being raised and fed with a little bit of that fear-based um, system and our bodies react back like they were intended to act or evolved to it to react way back then and we can project that energy out into the world the dust ball. Think of pig pen. So we can be a bunch of little pig pens running around with our dust balls, our fear-based, we'll say, dust balls. So are you envisioning that? Can you picture that? <laughs> I'm seeing it on a street right now. So let's, um, and that's not benefiting us or anybody else. So let's, let's kind of make believe for a second. So imagine that you are a little pig pen dust ball and you're walking, or your pig pen with your dust ball, walking down the street and you're emitting that dust ball energy out into the world. And I'm across the street and I have my own fear-based dust ball that I'm walking with. And I see you across the street and I'm like, oh, yay, a kindred spirit. So I make my way over to you and together, we've now joined our energies and we're walking down the street with our big dust ball, our twice the size dust ball. And we're going down the street. Well. Up ahead, we have, um, who are some more positive people like Sally or Linus, Linus was sweet, right? They're coming down the street and they're happy and they're laughing and they sense our energy or they see our dust ball and they just step aside because they don't want anything to do with this energy that we've created in our dust ball. And they step aside and let us go. But just down the way a little bit further, there's somebody else lurking around with their own separate fear-based energy that they have, or maybe it's more nefarious than that. And they say, Ooh, that's my kind of energy. And they come out around the corner and join us because basically what we attract, I mean, what we put out there is what we're going to attract. So something to kind of keep in mind, you know, we're either repelling it or we're inviting it one or the other, um, whichever it may be. So again, awareness is what I'm going to leave you with being consciously of where being consciously aware of what we're projecting out there is in way of energy. So what are some of the more positive energies that we can place out in the world instead of some of those more negative ones? And really the core four, I guess, I just came up with that one. Love and joy and kindness and compassion are some big ones. Um, gratitude, obviously, tolerance, understanding, forgiveness, and then we can get into our own like confidence and self-love and self-power, like stepping into your power. So I do did want to make clear that I wasn't necessarily encouraging people to have that, that fake happiness, but you know, then again, if you kind of fall into and liking the motto of, um, what is it? Fake it till you make it. And that works for you. Hey, you do you do you and make it work, okay? What I have found for me that works is really often coming back to a gratitude practice and either like amping it up or just refocusing on it in some way. And I find that that type of a practice can ground me and can often um, take me away from some of those other energies that may be kind of sliding in there a little bit, be it self-judgment or maybe judgment towards others, um, and really being thankful and grateful for 
whatever the situation is or whatever I'm learning from it or what have you. So I just want to throw that, that out there. And the other thing is I find is that I'm, as I'm healing and working on some of those things from the not so positive lists, perhaps that some of these um, energies on this list on the more positive side will get stronger. So for example, maybe working on releasing my own insecurities allows me to step into my power more. Does that make sense? So those are a couple for me. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> if we all found a way to live from that place of love, I'll put love as number one, um, toward ourselves or toward others, then the energy of this entire world would 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 mend, I, I think. And I say that with 99% certainty. Okay, so let's give this a try here. Um, again, awareness is the first step. And attempting to shift our unconscious or what may initially feel like the natural reaction to more a more conscious um, reaction, I guess we'll say, so that we're projecting more positive energy out into the world. This is our overall goal, right? Because we all have likely heard that what we send out into the world is likely what is going to come back to us for good or for not so good. Um, I, and I would much rather send out the positive energy and have positive energy come back to me than send out the not so great energy and have the not so great energy come back to me with a not so great lesson that I'm now needing to learn. So with that, here are a few tips that I have learned recently or over time, and I think they are handy to use. And one is a mirror. And we've heard this used for different things, but we're gonna focus in on projecting energy here versus our career or other things. So if we hold up a mirror and we look in it and we see who we are today and we're very honest with ourselves with who we see in way of what we're projecting out into the world, okay? So be honest with yourselves. And then we honestly sit there and think of, you know what, this is the person I want to be. And that gets a little bit into integrity as well, right? Um, and so this is who I want to be with kindness or love or whatever it is over here. So you need to be honest with yourself. Okay, what steps can I take today to become this person, even if it's a small step, even if that means leaving your office or your house today and hitting the road and um, you know holding a door open for somebody or you know smiling at somebody. It doesn't have to be anything huge, right? Um, tell somebody to have a nice day, tell somebody that they have a nice smile, just don't get too creepy with, with anything there. So that's one. The other is like a visualization. So think we could think of this as a more, more personal thing at times too. So say there's this person in your life that triggers you like every time and you fall for it every time and you don't want to fall for it anymore because it changes, it's, it's, it's just not good energy, right? Visualize the next encounter before that next encounter happens and visualize your reaction to it. Like, what your emotions are going to do. Maybe they're a little more level than your normal spikes and stuff like that. And then observe when that's all happening, what what happens during that interaction? Like what, based off from your kind of adaption of your reaction to things, how does that change how the whole thing plays out? And it's really interesting to kind of sit as an outside observer and watch this all play out. It can be really, um, really interesting. And sometimes you can completely disarm that other person and it changes kind of the trajectory of the relationship a little bit. But I mean, don't expect all that right from the get-go, but it's an interesting one to start playing with um, for sure. So, and truly a lot of this, I guess, is around practice or learn as we go or tweak here and there as we go because at the end of the day life is an experiment right and we're all just trying to figure out how to to kind of maneuver through this in the best way possible and be our truest self as well so here's another one is just head out just head out into the 
into the world and start experimenting. And that um, can be anything, you know, here's, here's an example. So we're on the highway and instead of cursing and getting frustrated because somebody tries to cut you off and, you know, instead of having that normal reaction, maybe just give a little space, let the person in, take a deep breath and let it go. And so instead of stewing in that anger or riding somebody else's bumper so that person can't get in or riding the person who's cutting you off bumper after they cut you in, why does that 10 seconds matter, right? So it says stewing that, let it go. Now what you've done is you haven't raced home to then tell everybody of this ghastly experience that you had on the highway you never brought that energy into the house because you had already let it go. You didn't ride with it the rest of the ride home and it's done. So that's a great one to, to play with or, you know, get back to walking down the street, deciding to walk down the street. And this time, like walk down full of confidence with a smile on your face instead of head down texting right? Like engage with the world. Um, and so I guess I leave it with like, do you see the power in that? It's, it's just amazing when we become conscious of the energy and the ripple effect that that can have out in the world as well. So again, awareness is that first step, attempting to shift our unconscious to conscious so that we can project that more positive energy out into the world. And that's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Before you go, I did want to mention and share with you that I do send out a weekly newsletter, as I mentioned. It comes out every Monday morning, and that's the only email that I send out. It includes a channeled inspirational message and then my two cents on it as well. And I would love for you to join me on that adventure. You can subscribe on tinalmoody.com. And it's right on the, the homepage there. And I would love again for you to join me. And that's a wrap. So thank you again for joining me now or whenever you may watch this. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, be well and keep stepping forward.